Hi, my name is Jonathan, and first of all, I love you very much. Wherever you are watching this vlog, I love you. Now, I want to tell you my story of how I turned from a conservative to becoming a left-wing radical. I used to be a conservative Republican, and several years ago, several years ago I became an anarcho-socialist. Um, an anarchist, specifically. Um, I grew up in a very conservative family, and my parents were Rep Republicans, and I grew up in a very religious family. And my dad was very wealthy. He was a very successful doctor, and we had lots of money growing up. Even though my dad's own background, he came from poverty, because his parents were missionaries in southern India, so he was constantly trying to fit in with other people in the upper middle class and with other professionals. And I personally got turned off by people in the upper middle class, because they're very snobby, and they felt like they were better than other people. So I was really turned off by that attitude. And I began to really hate materialism, because we had all this money, we went to nice restaurants, I got, I got whatever I wanted for Christmas and my birthday, and had lots of stuff, but did not have genuine relationships with my family. So I thought, all this materialism, all this stuff I have is, is shit compared to wanting a real genuine relationship. Um, with people, and so I got I really turned off by materialism, and uh, we traveled a lot growing up. I've been to 18 countries, and I used to live in Kenya for a couple of years because my parents were missionaries there. My dad practiced medicine in Kenya, and I witnessed extreme poverty in the third world, having been to other parts of the developing world. Um, I was shocked by how poor people were, how little they had, and at the same time, they were very happy with the little they had, and I was really impressed by that. So I went, and I also witnessed a great wealth disparity, um, both in this country and in the developing world. And so I was appalled at seeing the huge gap between those who are incredibly rich versus all these people who are very poor and had nothing. So I was really turned off by the wealth disparity traveling around the world, and I witnessing all extreme poverty um, around the world. And I also noticed while traveling around the world that at a very un unconscious level, the rich, the wealthy, are actually very afraid of the poor. Um, and I was um, surprised by that, because I had noticed that um, the, the rich are very afraid of the power of the poor, because the, the poor have power, if only they knew it. So that impressed me. So, and also being religious, and being a born-again Christian growing up, I noticed the discrepancy between what the Bible says about poverty and what, what Jesus said about poverty and wealth um, versus how American Christians live. I mean, very clear in the Gospels that Jesus wants Christians to give up all their wealth, to, to just give all their money to the poor and to live um, very simply. And Jesus Christ is a communist, basically. So that, that, that disparity between who Jesus is and what's said in the Gospels versus how American Christians live. Um, in general, they're very selfish. American Christians are very selfish, even though they think they're giving their money, tithing, and all that shit like that. They're not. American Christians are very selfish. So, now me growing up in the church, because I grew up in the Reformed Church of America and the Presbyterian Church of America, um, I was, it was constantly reinforced to me that I am a victim, that I was a victim. Because especially evangelical Christians have this martyrdom complex where all these are our moral rights like gay marriage, abortion, um, prayer in school, and all these um, values American Christians have, they're, they're under attack. And it's a whole the apocryphal thing that we think Jesus Christ is coming again, and it's said in the book of Revelation that we're going to be persecuted as Christians. So, so American Christians teach their children basically to prepare for the apocalypse and to, they they give children a worldview. American Christians, evangelical Christians, give a, their kids a worldview that they are victims and the whole world is against them. So I had that worldview growing up. So they have a huge martyrdom complex. And so I it was it was ingrained within me as an American Christian to to keep God in America and to fight for keeping God in America. Or, or else, um, God will take away our blessings and we'll leave, lose all our freedoms, lose our own money and all that. So, and that's part of the worldview of American Christians. You're a, you're a victim, martyrdom complex, and God will take away your freedoms if you don't stand up for God and fight gay marriage, fight abortion, and all that. So it's a very, 
It's a very fearful God. American Christians are they're afraid of God. It's a very harsh God. American Christians have. So, no, so in, by high school, I took up the conservative cause to, to defend Christians. So I became a more active Republican during high school. And from high school on, from high school to college, I had lots of friends that were internationals, both pen pals and exchange students. I loved making friends with people from around the world. And it was a result of having friends with internationals. They would tell me problems that they had with the United States of America. Um, but it's not just that Christians in America that have a martyrdom complex. In general, Americans have a martyrdom complex. Because they assume if people, other non-Americans, have a problem with America, they're jealous. They're jealous of our money, they're jealous of our freedoms we have. Um, so it's a, Americans have a martyrdom complex where we're victims and they're, they're just jealous. Non-Americans are jealous. That's why they complain about us. So I saw, I finally decided to consider the reasons that, um, internationals have the problems, they, the issues they br bring up about the United States of America, whether it's um, um, our foreign policy, our America's destruction of the environment globally, um, the shallowness of American materialism, because a lot of cultures around the world, they do not want to have anything to do with that shallowness that is attached to the American way of materialism. And I also started reading about our foreign policy, the history of our foreign policy. I was completely appalled at how awful the United States has been towards the poor, killing, killing thousands upon thousands, millions of innocent civilians all around the world. That's what the United States of America has done. So I was, I was shocked to learn about this. Growing up in the Cold War, like we're the best country in the world, whatever. So, and me being, growing up, me being a conservative Republican, I was opposed to government intervention. And I, I still am because I'm an anarchist. So I'm opposed to any form of government inter intervention that takes away our freedom to choose how we want to rule our lives. Self-determination. Because government, in general, um, it, it just destroys self-determination. But at the same time, right when I entered the workforce, I, I notice entering the workforce that employers are act, actually trample our freedoms a lot more than the government does. So it's complete absurdity if you're going to be opposed to government intervention but not seek any form of freedoms as a worker uh, in, the, in the workforce in the United States of America. You, you can't have, you can't be against, it's absurd to be against government intervention while at the same time um, leaving your, your libertarian values at the doorstep of your workplace and not, not taking that into the workplace. Independence, freedom, um, self-responsibility, self-reliance in your workplace, not just outside the workplace. And that is, um, that's the, the heart of anarchy, of anarchism. So also in college I started reading Noam Chomsky, who's an anarchist, and just shocked about learning a new worldview concerning America by reading lots of Noam Chomsky. Um, he, made, he made a lot of sense. Finally, there was 9-11, the terrorist attacks, 9-11. Um, and what I noticed about 9-11 is the in, very intentional neglect of intelligence um, that preceded 9-11. Um, it was completely neglected. Because, like, even, even since the 70s, Pal like Hamas and Palestinian terrorists have been planning, and they've been training since the 70s to to fly airplanes into buildings. It's been there since the 70s. And so we had like 30 years and we have done nothing about it. And so it was obvious to me that this 9-11 was an excuse to go to war against Iraq, to go to war in Afghanistan. And also since I got my bachelor's degree in Middle East Studies, I deeply love Muslims. So it was very hurtful to me that we would bomb and go to war against Muslim nations, against Muslims in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And it was obvious to me this not, was not about fighting terrorism, but it's about capitalism because Iraq has all this oil. Iraq was about oil. Afghanistan was about the minerals because there's three trillion dollars worth of minerals that need to be mined in Afghanistan. So it was obviously not about our freedoms, not as Americans. And just the, with 9-11, the complete lack of logic with taking the war to them, to the terrorists, and preemptive attacks, and all this absurd logic related to why we're having this war on terror. Um, so I was thinking something is not right. Nothing is adding up. So the, uh, as a result of me anti-war, I, I finally decided 
um, I became a member of the Socialist Party USA, and I, be, I eventually became an elector um, for the Socialist Party USA for a U.S. congressional district. So, and I, at the same time, also learning as part of my worldview as an uh, anarcho-socialist that you cannot have democracy at a political level if you do not have it at an economic level at the same time. One example of that is the whole Citizens United decision by the, the, um, the Supreme Court in 2010, where now, regarding our, our, we don't have a right to vote. The American people, we, do, we as the American people do not vote in um, representatives into the U.S. government anymore because basically corporations have unlimited spending when it comes to political campaigns. Um, so corporations are the ones that put, in, put into power the people in the U.S. Congress, not the American people. That's one example of you cannot have, um, you can't, can't have democracy at the political level and not at the economic level at the same time. And also at the same time as my becoming a left-wing radical and just throwing myself in completely to, um, to revolution of toppling capitalism and um, engaging myself in revolution. At the same time, I also converted to Eastern Orthodoxy. I'm an, I'm an Eastern Orthodox Christian. And Eastern Orthodoxy does not have a dualism like Evangelical Christianity does. There's no dualism within Eastern Orthodoxy. So, me as an Eastern Orthodox Christian, I, we, we are no different than Muslims, no different than atheists, no different than Buddhists or whoever. We, see, we as Eastern Orthodox Christians see ourselves as no different than Muslims um, and, and atheists and other, other world religions and all that. Unlike Evangelical Christians, Protestant Christians, it's not a, it's not a, because they have a dualistic world. There's those who are saved versus those who are unsaved, the non-saved. So, as a result of evangelical Christians having that worldview, it's all it's a big, huge culture war that they are victims because they are the ones that are saved, and they they see themselves as different than other human beings. Evangelical Christians, they think those who are non-saved are subhuman. Essentially, they don't intend to, but that's part of their unconscious mind. So, so. Uh, as a result of me be becoming Eastern Orthodox Christian, I noticed that I am no different than not just people of other religions, but other um, political um, persuasions. Like, I'm no different than conservative. It's not about me as a left-wing radical against conservatives. It is about me against injustice, um, social injustice. So, war in general, as a result of me becoming an Eastern Orthodox Christian, I've noticed that war in general is just imaginary. War is just in your imagination. Whether it's a culture war, whether it's the war on terror, it's all in your head. War is not real because we are no different than our enemy. Like our values, what we want out of life, um, we are just as human as our our enemy. Um, there's no dualism. So that's what how I realized that war is not real. And so anyway, that's a little bit of explanation of how I used to be a conservative Republican and now a left wing radical. Um, radical because reform does not work. Because it's about the, the personal is political. Meaning reform will do no good. We need a nonviolent pacifist revolution to get rid of capitalism globally and install a perfectly democratic democracy around the world via socialism. So thank you very much and I love you.